Hello again, this is Fiendish with Dimension Touring, and welcome to this installment of the Tinker Tools video guides. And we'll be talking about the custom pivot function of copy and paste. <coughs> Last time, of course, we covered rotational offsets, and custom pivot is another way of doing a rotational offset. However, it's a lot faster and easier than, say, placing each one of these cubes individually would be, um, which is how we used to have to make circles you know, maybe rotating each block on a 15 degree offset. This allows us to just paste the whole set in one go. It's also the way to make fancy spiral staircases like this one. Um, it takes about less than 10 minutes. You can also make cylinders, you can make uneven round shapes, you can do just just about anything with it that you want to. So let's pull some of this stuff up so we can actually get started with building and we'll first make just a basic circle. Now what custom pivot does is it sets a pivot point. Kind of like how when we uh, did a rotating on a relative move we worked off of a pivot point and custom pivot is kind of like that um, in its theory of how it works. So let's just go ahead and scale this down to 0 0.5. We're just going to pick a random size circle. Now I want to paste another cube down. And this is where we're going to start pulling in the offset calculator. Cubes, they're scaled at 0.5. Detected my selection delta, then I want to calculate, and now I want to move it to the move window. And I want to hit all those reload buttons so that I can take this pole and move it. So what I'm doing is I'm setting a central point, basically a center point, so that all these cubes that I'm going to make my circle with can rotate around that. So when you're in custom pivot, you're going to I want flicker reduction on. When I have my pole selected, I want to come to my copy and paste window with custom pivot checked and hit pick. Now I want to select pick a cube, any cube, and hit copy. Now I want to pick a rotation. Well, I want to try to do the least amount of items first. So let's try 20 degrees. 20 times 18 is 360. I can pull both of these up since I'm making a full circle and then hit paste. That's about what I expected. I've got a pretty significant gap along my outer edge. Now this might be work uh, for whatever I'm designing, but chances are good if I wanted to make a solid circle like this, it's not gonna work. So let's pull these up and I don't have to change anything Let's try a, 20, a 15 degree offset with 24 items and then hit paste. Now I've still got just a little bit here. Now if it gets to where this size circle is getting to be too many items, <coughs> excuse me, I can recopy and paste on maybe bringing that cube in a little bit closer to that pole. But first we'll try that. I mean, you can see that even with trial and error, it's not really taking that long to make each one of these circles. And I'm not doing any math. Okay, so now if I wanna rotate it, where it's upright, all I have to do is rotate in the relative, and there it is. And I can, you know, come in and do, say I want to scale it to a different size. So I've just saved myself a ton of times, or a ton of time, even with however many times I had to reload that circle. And that works the same for, that theory works the same no matter what you make. 
whether it's a circle, whether it's a cylinder made out of planks, um, it's going to follow that exact same procedure every time. So now let's try a little staircase here. A quick little spiral staircase. I'm just going to reuse the planks that I already have so I don't have to resize them. Okay, so I can do each step, the whole step, all in one go because I've got that uh, multiple item copy and paste now. So I can build the step first. The one thing I cannot do with the steps is do the railing if it's going to follow that same every other step. Okay, so I've got one block at the default, one rotated um, 90 degrees in the pitch, and one rotated 90 degrees in the roll, so that way I've got a little bit of a an outside wall here. I don't want to select those yet. Okay, I'm going to turn on custom pivot and hit pick. I'm going to select all three of those planks. I don't want 30. Let's say 14. Usually when you're doing stairs and you want to build a railing, railing on, an even number is going to work out better for you in the end. And then we'll say, and remember with stairs like this, it's going to be a narrow, a narrow rotation. So let's, let's try six. Doesn't have to be six. You can do five. You can do seven. Um, but the main thing is if you're making spiral stairs like this, you're going to want to eliminate or at least minimize as much as possible any gaps over here, especially a gap big enough that somebody might fall through. So I'm going to hit copy. Now since I'm offsetting, oh, might want to do that too. We need to set a step height. Since I'm offsetting up, I want to leave this stair here. Copy and paste because we already picked this pole. And just like that, it's building itself in front of us. Okay, now if I want to add the railing, I'm going to deselect all that. I'm going to get rid of my multiple items here. There we go. I'm just going to take a pole, and this is the default size. So I want to follow the same curve. Now just like we did with the straight stairs in the distance offset video, I want to double this step height. And then I want to double that rotation, and I want to cut my number of copies in half, because I only want part of this railing pole to be on every other step, not on every step. So I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to pick my, pi my pivot point, which is that metal pole there. Then I'm going to copy this wood pole, leave it in place, and hit paste. There we go. And now, just because I know the angle of this is good, um, it took me three times earlier when I made this staircase for this video. It took me three times to get this railing angled right, so I'm not going to mess with it now just in the interest of time because we've got a little bit more of a complex feature to make after this. So now I want to cut this down to six because otherwise I would have a piece sticking out from the top here. And then I'm going to come back through and pick that metal pole. Now I'm not sure if I have to pick every time I start a new rotation, I do it just to be on the safe side. Then copy and paste. And that's how easy it is. And there's no math, no complicated calculations. Um, you can do the math if you want to, depending on how high, um, at what angle you want your stair top to be at. Like say, I didn't go straight for 180 degrees or 360 or whatever. I just 
went high enough to get a good staircase built for this video. And this assumes, of course, that you're going to put a wall or a pole or whatever on this edge here to try to hide that. So you may have noticed on some of the earlier videos, I had a gigantic dome uh, sitting in here. And I spent all day trying to do that dome where I could just, you know, do a rotational offset and copy and paste the whole arch set without, you know, having to try to figure up a whole bunch of math and everything. And I couldn't do it until I tried using uh, custom pivot. So I'm going to load this one rib in the original location. And the rib was made using standard, you know, just normal uh, rotational offsets. I like uh, cubes for sculpting and I can go ahead and I can keep reloading this set over and over and over again and doing a relative rotation or I can use a multiple item copy and paste uh, custom pivot. Alright, so let's try to center that approximately. Now it doesn't really matter where I put this pole. Um, as far as the width wise, what I want is the selection point for this thing to turn around. So I'm going to turn my scale off. And I'm going to bring copy and paste back up. And I want to pick this. Now I already know from putting this dome together about four times now that a 12 degree rotation is pretty good, which is still a lot of items. So I picked that pole. I'm going to come here and copy this. Now 12 times 30 is 360. So that's how many items I want to copy because remember it's pivoting around the selection point or it's counting that selection point as one item and not these 12 distinct cubes here. Either way it's still going to be about 360 cubes. Copy and then I want to pull that up and hit paste. And then while this builds, uh, because it does, this one does take a long time, I can go AFK, go make a sandwich, eat part of the sandwich, and then come back and it should be just about done. So we'll watch it for just another minute or so. You can see how well it's putting itself back together, and we'll be right back. And there we are. It is complete, and you're not going to move this with the default client. Um, I would suggest if you're going to try something like this that you put it in the spot where it's going to stay. Uh, I mean, I can try to do a relative move and raise it up some. But honestly, I, I would probably just put this where it's going to be and then build around it. And as you can see, there's a lot of items at the top that could be pulled out. But the important thing is, is that even though the rotation probably isn't perfect and everything else, it's still uh, put it together pretty quickly and easily all things considered that something like this could have taken several hours or days uh, to work out. And then I can come and pull this pole. And if I wanted to build a body for it, I can do that. In fact, we'll put a body on it just to kind of uh, go back over a basic very basic uh, custom pivot. This time we'll use some planks. I'm going to pick a scale. And I'm going to try to line it up with a 
84. Well, it's, it's going to have to be between these two. That's about straight. I can tuck it up in there, and no one will ever know that it's not on the same angle. And set another point down. Then I'm going to open my offset calculator again. These are our planks. Oh. Scale. And the scale, putting the scale in the offset calculator when you're doing this really just helps to try to gauge some accuracy when it comes to configuring the selection point. I want to put it in the move. Turn all those. And then we'll try just doing it with the center uh, corner post. Okay, so I'm going to use that as my pick point. I'm going to copy there. And we'll try to do a smaller rotation so we can try to save some items because if you just spent 360 on a dome, you may not have enough or a lot left over. So we'll try 18 and 20 and then paste. Okay. So let's try 20, oh, 15, and 24. It's still not going to be enough. I'm going to let it go through the pace. And then we'll try 12. And 30 is probably going to be too many. But this is just to give you an idea of how it's actually done, and it's not. That's not too much of an overlap there. And this just goes to show that you can use custom pivot to make a lot of things that you might otherwise not uh, be able to do free-handed or not want to spend the time on free-handed. Um, it just really is that easy. So join us next time. We'll talk about loading and saving sets. And until then, happy building.